Wednesday. Good morning or afternoon, wherever everyone's watching. Um, if you want to just drop where you're watching from, we love to see where everyone is around the country and world. Um, so exciting. And we're here today with Latasha James. Um, hi, Latasha. So happy Hello. to have you. Good morning. Excited to be here. If you aren't familiar with Latasha, then you are in a good place because she is an amazing marketing strategist, online marketing educator, and even the host of her own podcast, Freelance Fridays. Um, so make sure to check that podcast out too, because Metrical is mentioned a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, super excited to talk about repurposing content today. Um, we actually saw Latasha at Social Media Marketing Worlds in San Diego. Um, got to meet in person and yeah, just love Latasha. So excited to have I you I love Metricool. I'm a big fan. <laughs> it's been a, a game changer for my business. So excited to, to partner together. Yeah. Um, well, let's jump into it. Awesome. Okay. All right, everyone. Sorry. Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Cool, cool. So I'm going to talk about video content repurposing. Um, it's a big, hot topic now that we've got so much going on. So let's move forward. I want to ask you a question <clears throat> really quick for anyone who is a <clears throat> social media manager, um, small business owner. Would anybody else just let me know in the chat with a, a thumbs up or an agree? Would anyone else describe their feelings about social media this year as overwhelming? overwhelmed, feeling a little confused with all the different things going on. Because I'll skip forward and tell you a little bit about my story. I've got some hand raises in the chat there. Um, when I first started on social media, managing social media accounts, I was really just focused on this, posting simple quotes to Facebook. Then came this guy, Instagram was next. And over time, Today, 2023, we are looking at all of this stuff. We are looking to be on Instagram. We're supposed to be creating videos for TikTok, for Instagram, for Facebook, for all of these different platforms, right? Pinterest, we don't even talk about that one all yeah. the time. So there are so many different platforms that we have to focus on. So let's skip forward. And oh, yeah, there's also very confusing messages being sent, right? How many of us have seen this news head of Instagram says that Instagram's no longer a photo sharing app. And then they're like, but actually, um, YouTube wants us to do long form posts. And then Instagram goes ahead and says, actually, let's stay focused on photos again. So it's very confusing. It's very overwhelming. We're kind of being asked to do all the things. And I want to talk about how to make those things easier. See a lot of people agreeing in the chat. So it sounds like this is a good topic to talk about. Yeah. Um, so really quick. Yeah. Aniston introduced me a little bit. Um, I do a lot of things. I do a YouTube channel and a podcast. I also, you know, I pr produce two weekly YouTube videos, about three weekly Instagram posts, LinkedIn posts. I send out two email newsletters and a couple of TikToks per week. And I am the sole creator of all this content. So I want to let you know that it is possible, even if you are on a small team, if you are a solopreneur, a new creator, it's totally possible. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So um, the first thing to think about when we think about repurposing is what do all of these platforms have in common, right? We often think about what makes them so different that some are short form, some are long form, some require faces, some require this, some require that, but what do they all have in common? What they all have in common is storytelling. That's the basis of what content creation is. It starts with a good story. So that's rule number one. Rule number one of repurposing is that you've got to start with a good story. Um, it's really hard to repurpose garbage into something good. So you want to start with that gold and repurpose into little, little chunks of gold. So um, the key things to think about when we, when we do think about what makes them different are generally we're talking about long form uh, platforms, long form content versus short form content. So short form is going to be your TikTok, your Instagram reels, your YouTube shorts now. That, that's a new thing. And this type of content really thrives off of trendy, bite-sized, in-the-moment topics. So that's great for things that come up suddenly, um, things that are going to be really trendy in the news, in pop culture, that kind of thing. Long form 
is going to be your podcast, your long form YouTube videos, LinkedIn uh, articles and posts, blog posts, anything that's kind of SEO friendly. Mm -hmm. And with long form content, that's going to follow this more kind of complete storytelling framework. So you're going to have a beginning, a middle and an end. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So this is what your, your long form storytelling arc is kind of going to look like. You're going to have the exposition, right? You're going to share a little bit of background. You're going to share a rising action. You're going to have the climax, the falling action, and you're going to end your video with a resolution or your piece of content, your blog post, whatever. Short form, you really want to focus on just a couple areas. When you are clipping and repurposing from your long form, you want to focus on the rising action or the climax in most cases, because these are going to be those things that really get people's attention that are like those maybe shocking moments or those really compelling moments. They don't need to be bored with that background and all of that stuff. You want to really hook them with one of those two areas of storytelling. So I'll show you, I think I have a couple examples here. So this was a video that I did. It was actually a live stream that I did when all of the madness was going on with Twitter. I think this was late last year when Elon Musk acquired Twitter and everybody was like, Twitter's dying. It was a, it was a moment. You kind of had to be there to, to know how um, intense it was. But I knew that was a topic I needed to bring to my audience. Lots of people were asking me about it. But at the same time, it wasn't something I felt I could very articulate articulately explain in like 15 or 30 seconds. So I did a live stream to answer people's questions and share all the background. But what I did is I knew that it, since it was trending, I went ahead and I cut this into shorts as well. And here is um, the, here are the sections that I clipped. So there was like a really shocking tweet that went out because of the ver their, the verification issues that were going on. Um, and so I made sure to clip that section where I was showing one, this familiar character, Mario, um, doing something really kind of shocking and it, it hooked people, right? It got their attention and uh, it made people stop and say like, wait, what is going on on Twitter or what's going on with Mario? So those are the sections that I actually cut into TikToks, YouTube shorts, all of that. So we will skip ahead and go to the second rule of repurposing. The second rule of repurposing was just kind of illustrated there. Don't forget long form. I know that short form is all the rage right now and it is so incredibly powerful, but creating long form actually makes your short form content go easier. And we're gonna talk about exactly why. So um, first off, uh, long form content is really beneficial because it is still looked at as the ultimate thought leadership content. It's still really the go to for authoritative content. If somebody has a library of, you know, 50 videos that are 20 minutes long on a specific topic, we look at them as experts. We look at them as people who are passionate about that that topic. Um, and th that's just kind of how it how it's been for a long time. It, they're also incredibly discoverable, you know, short form content is very discoverable because of algorithms and hashtags and all of that. But the cool thing about long form content like YouTube channels and blogs is you can also lean on the powers of Google and SEO to help build your audience. People still Google things all the time. Some of us have Google devices in our homes, right? So we wanna capitalize on that power. And then lastly, like I kind of mentioned, um, it's adaptable. You know, cutting long form content into short form pieces of content is so much easier than the reverse. It's a lot harder to take a 30 second clip and turn it into something longer. So um, it is really adaptable and flexible. So um, here's just a quick illustration of what I mean by that SEO power. So I think that search term is social media manager. If you type social media manager into Google, um, I'm seeing my face or my content one, two, three, four, five places on that first page. And I don't even have a blog. <laughs> so, uh, or I guess I technically do, but I don't publish to it as much as I should. <laughs> so that's YouTube. That's the power of YouTube SEO right there. Um, we can move forward and um, I'll show you what else I'm getting out of that one YouTube video as well. We're getting a weekly LinkedIn post, a TikTok, an Instagram. I repurpose my, or I transcribe my video into text so that I can send out an email newsletter. 
we've got the podcast. All you got to do is just set up a microphone alongside your video and you've got a podcast as well. So, so many different things that you can do with long form content. And the third rule of repurposing is you want to make it easy for yourself. If you go into any type of content creation, trying to do all every single step, like 100% perfect and just super ornate and, and overwhelming, you're going to end up overwhelmed and you're not going to do any of it at all. So one, developing systems, but also just starting where you're at. That's what I always like to tell people is just start with what you have and that's going to make it so much easier. So um, a couple of things that really helped me, one, just don't reinvent the, the wheel. You know, you can, you can, again, start with what you have. Something that really helps is outlining my long form video and actually going into that long form recording, highlighting some potential short form sound bites. So for example, if I want to talk about why you should be a social media manager in 2023, instead of just kind of you know, going off the top of my head, I might take a few minutes and look up some LinkedIn reports about the state of, you know, the industry and job growth, job projections, things like that. So I have some interesting stats to talk about because I know if I say, this is not a real stat, I'm pulling it off the top of my head, but if I were to say, you know, the social media management industry is expected to grow 10% in the next year, that's going to be something that's going to get people's attention if I post that on TikTok or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts, as opposed to kind of sharing that long, drawn out topic. Another thing that really will help you is framing your shot with enough room to actually fit into a vertical video frame. So most of the short form platforms nowadays are this vertical format. So it's it's a little different for somebody like me who is a YouTube creator to learn how to film. So all that I started to do is just back my camera up a couple of inches to give myself more headroom so that I'm not like zooming in <laughs> to the middle of my face. Um, just give yourself a little bit of extra extra room there. And then something else that I really like to do is schedule time, you know, treat it like an appointment, treat it like a meeting and schedule time to work on repurposing content every single week. I put it on my calendar because a lot of us as creators, we think once we do that big, you know, that YouTube video or that blog post or whatever, the podcast, that big piece of content, our job is done, right? We've done the thing, but now we're just, we're really only like 50% of the way there. Now we've got to promote that thing. And so if you stop halfway through, you're probably not going to see the results that you are looking for. And something, this little, little hack that I started doing um, in 2020, probably 2021, is I started joining co-working groups and working on um, different different things together. And so we actually do a video co-working group in the Freelance Friday Club, my group. You can just get a group of friends together and do it on Zoom, meet up with friends with, for coffee. It really helps to do that body doubling and kind of keep each other accountable as well. Okay. So when you talk about the outline, do you have any tools or kind of any you know process that you go through um, to create the outline? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I actually use Asana personally for just kind of, it's nice because I can add my team on there and communicate back and forth about, you know, if there needs to be an edit made or if somebody else is involved in production. So I just, I just outline right in Asana personally. Nice. Um, I also like using Metricool as placeholders sometimes. So I'll use my content calendar and just save topics in draft mode. Mm -hmm. If I know there's like a particular topic I want to talk about and you can do little outlines in there too. So whatever, whatever tool works best for you. Amazing. I know we use Asana as well. I love Asana. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So good. Minimizes emails, which I'm all about. Yes. <laughs> So, so yeah, here's an example of the, you know, giant head. I mean, this one, this one really isn't too bad, but TikTok actually has a tool within their advertising, their advertiser resources, I think. It's this um, like PNG overlay. So you can test how your, your video is going to fit within TikTok's controls and all of that. So yeah, you could see this just backing up the camera, zooming out just a little bit allows most of my head to actually fit within that green safe area and not be covered up by all of those controls like the share and comment button and things like that on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And this is for TikTok in particular, but 
Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, it tends to follow that same kind of format. Okay, so rule number four of repurposing is to create a repeatable system. This is really key. Uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but if you just go halfway through and, and quit there, you're never going to see the results that you want. So you want to make sure that you have a repeatable system, a checklist that you can go through every single week and just make it a part of your routine. So what I like to do um, in my video editor, I know we all probably use different technology to, to edit our videos. I personally use Final Cut Pro. Uh, a lot of the video editors, I would say most of the video editors that you're going to use have some type of marker system or comment system or flagging system that you can use. And I use these markers to identify new clips as I'm editing that first long form video. So if I, again, hear myself say a stat or just a funny moment or something that I think is going to be kind of compelling, I'll drop a, a marker in that section of the timeline so I can go back on the second edit and just clip those sections out and reformat them into a vertical format. So as opposed to totally reinventing the wheel once the video is already out and re-editing it, basically, I'm kind of thinking with short form in mind while I'm doing my first long form edit as well. Uh, captions are incredibly important, especially for short form vertical video, since it really lives on people's phones. And we use our phones differently than we do a laptop or a television, right? So captions are really essential for that reason and also for accessibility. So make sure you caption all your videos. You can, if you're um, using TikTok, they have their automatic transcription, which I find performs the best in the algorithm using that native app. If you're using uh, YouTube Shorts or Instagram Reels or anything else, I really like Descript is a really great app for adding those captions that are burned in. Uh, CapCut's another great option too. It's a totally free editor and you can add captions and effects and things like that. And then of course, you wanna find a one-stop shop scheduler to actually distribute the content because I have certainly been in this place where I got all my clips ready, everything was looking beautiful, and then they sat on my hard drive <laughs> for you know weeks because that takes time to open up these apps on your phones, trans airdrop them, like it's it's a mess, and that is a job in and of itself. So I really love Metricool's features. Um, one of my favorite things is that just right within the planning feature, you can upload your your single video. And then you can start and write just a general caption. So maybe this says, this was a video I did about failure, basically. So I could do a general um, caption. And then if you click on these different social platforms that you want to share it onto, Twitter, Instagram Reel, et cetera, um, you can actually edit the content for the specific platform. So we all know that the exact same caption might not work across platforms. You might want to add hashtags on Instagram, right? I might not want to do that on Facebook or not as many on Twitter. Or we you know Twitter has a shorter character limit. So you might want to tweak the captions just a little bit. But now you're starting with this basic you know, um, formula. So you're really just tweaking for each platform as opposed to, again, pulling out your phone, copying and pasting and doing doing all the things. Definitely. And it's nice and metrical. Um, each, you know, each network, it will, the tool will have a, the little reminder button at the bottom to say, okay, so, you know, if you wrote your caption for Instagram, it's over that character amount for Twitter, it'll say, okay, you're over the amount or you have too many hashtags um, to really make sure that, you know, before you actually post, everything is ready to go, is all good. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, not posting or not uploading for you, which is nice. Yes. Metrical is always giving me my reminders. I'm like, oh, shoot, I wrote too much for Twitter. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so love that. And then I actually just talked about this. Um, if you watch my channel, I just talked about this feature in yesterday's video. Uh, it's a new one for me. And it's really, really cool. It's the auto list feature. So something you can do if you're somebody like me who creates a lot of video content and you have a backlog i mean i have like over 500 videos on my channel so whenever i get some free time and i want to just create some shorts 
I can then throw them into this queue, basically, this auto list feature. I'm sure Aniston can probably describe it better than I do. <laughs> but you basically throw things into the queue and it'll automatically go out for you um, based on your predetermined schedule for this content. So that's a really nice way to just make use of like evergreen content, content that you just have kind of hanging out on your hard drive and just send it out on a, on a re recurring schedule. Yeah. We'll make sure to drop um, a link to a blog post that just goes through kind of everything about Autolist. But yeah, this is a great option for kind of just automating and recycling that content. So, you know, you can add in as many pieces of content as you want. Um, and then you can choose to recycle and have the content repeat. So yeah, it's just nice if for, you know, creators that want to keep, you know, have that evergreen content um, and just something that you don't have to worry about. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. So last rule of repurposing for now, at least, <laughs> is cool. just press publish. You just got to start. I mean, again, I think it's really easy as creators, as business owners to really overthink it, to really overthink the creation process. But at the end of the day, your audience just wants to hear from you. You don't have to be perfect. Start with what you got and just press publish. So some things that have helped me do that. First, know your audience, right? As much as you can talk to your audience, get social. That's why it's called social media. Talk to your audience, kind of get a feel for who is on which of your platforms so that you can post really strategically depending on your audience. So, you know, one post that I might, might post on TikTok might not do as well to my LinkedIn audience because I know most of my LinkedIn audience are more corporate folks brands that I've worked with, people that I've worked with in back when I worked in corporate, that may not work so well as a, you know, younger, more hip platform like TikTok. So know your audience. This is also something that analytics can really help you with is knowing who is hanging out on which of your platforms. So you can choose, um, choose clips that work best for those audiences. Also, you want to always make sure that you add some of those finishing touches like user tags, Captions, again, we already talked about something you can do in like TikTok, for example, is once your TikTok is posted, go into the app and rename your audio. So for example, I post most of my TikTok is just made up of uh, podcast clips. So I'll go in there and rename the audio to say Freelance Friday Podcast or latashajames.com slash podcast just to add that little branding element. So if somebody does run across my TikTok and they want to know how to hear more from me and where this clip came from, there's that little brand reminder there. And then of course, review your analytics regularly. You know, don't just post and ghost, like post and then review, post and improve. Like you've got to start somewhere to improve. And analytics is a great way to do that. Just Put a reminder, I like to look at my analytics weekly as just kind of a browse browse through. And then monthly is when I get those reports from Metropool that I'm really diving deep into and analyzing. And just like um, co-editing or co-working, I actually treat my analytics like a meeting, even though it's just me. I schedule an hour on my calendar every month to really sit through and, and sift through those analytics so that I can see which topics were performing best, which platforms were performing best, which content types were performing best, and so on. And what I really like, I think I have a screenshot on the next slide, is in Metricool's, okay, it's actually the next slide, but I'll talk about this first. Um, <laughs> So example, I kind of explained like this was a podcast interview that I did with one of my good friends who is a pretty large uh, TikTok creator. And we talked for probably like an hour and a half. It was a really long podcast interview. We talked about so many different things. So, um, you know, we talked about the creator fund and monetization on TikTok and sort of like the economy of TikTok, if you will. But then we also talked about how, how smaller creators can get started, how to get those good ideas. And so I place these clips, you know, on different platforms. LinkedIn is more of my creator economy folks, brands that I've worked with, people who are really business owners and, and things like that. So I talked more about that economy of TikTok, you know, the creator fund on there. And then on TikTok itself, I know a lot of people are looking to be creators or looking in that content creation hashtag. So I posted his quick advice for 
what advice do you have for people who are looking to find their voice on TikTok? And both of those performed really well. I don't know that they would have performed quite as well if I were to have were to have done the reverse because of the different demographics on those platforms. Definitely. And how I would be able to see that is by going into my analytics. And what I really like is in Metricool, if you actually go down to your post section, um, it'll actually show you little screenshots because sometimes I'm like, if I just see that caption or the post ID, <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what that was. And then you got to like pull out your phone and cross check it with the date. And so you can actually see, and if you actually click on them, you can expand and, and see the full thing. So that way I can really look for trends. I can sort these different columns if I want to see based on impressions versus comments versus engagement and so on. Uh, so making sure to get in there regularly is a great, a great tip I have. So um, that's really it. You just want to make sure one, you tell good stories. Um, whether you're thinking about long form or short form, all content really is rooted in storytelling. So make sure that you are telling, telling, making content that you want to hear and telling stories that you would want to learn from. Start long form if you are trying to make this as easy as possible, right? If you have all the time in the world, by all means, do all the things. But I think most of us probably do not have all the time in the world if we're business owners, content creators. So it's much easier to repurpose long to short versus short to long. You want to make it easy for yourself by just simplifying your recording process, making a couple of small adjustments so that you're not having to reframe your shot or redo things. Create a system. Adding repurposing into your regular routine is really helpful. And having a system that's going to help you do that is even better. Press publish. Think strategically about which of your clips are going to go on which platforms, but also don't overthink it. Like just post and see because you can always look at your analytics and improve from there. And then rinse and repeat repeat, you know, regularly audit your platforms. Again, look at those analytics monthly, if not weekly, and just take note of what's performing well, and then do more of that, you know, recycle more of that. If something is really taking off on TikTok, I'll often then post it on Instagram reels or YouTube shorts and try to capitalize on that trending topic. So that's all I have, I think. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tell everyone where they can find you. I also know you have some exciting things coming up if you want to share yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. So I'm at the Latasha James everywhere. Latasha James here on YouTube. Um, LatashaJames.com if you want to find out more about courses, programs, anything like that. And I also would love to invite you all. I'm having a um, live workshop next week, um, Friday, actually. That's all about social media management portfolios. So if any of you are social media managers or want to become one, uh, I think Metricool just dropped a link so you can subscribe or to uh, sign up for that too. So yes, yeah. that's amazing. That's going to be super helpful for everyone. And this was too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that you put it in the arc of a story form. I have never seen that related to long form and short form, but it makes it really easy to understand that, okay, you know, the long form is going to be the full arc. Mm -hmm. And then some of the short forms is just those quick bites, the, you know, the exciting kind of clips, which is really easy to take from that long form and just kind of find those different nuggets. So yeah, really helpful to understand that. Yeah, we so often overcomplicate it with all, all the tech, but at the end of the day, it's just storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I always think back to my, I think it was my 10th grade English teacher. Mm -hmm. and she was teaching us how to write research papers. She said the titles should be provocative and evocative. So mm -hmm. they should tell a little bit about what you're going to get, but they should also be, you know, kind of exciting, kind of, you know, spicy to get people to actually want to read it. And so I always have that in the back of my head when I'm thinking, especially for short form, when you only have this really small amount of time to really hook people. So mm -hmm. think about that. Think about what sections of your long form video are going to be provocative, but also evocative. You know, you don't want to clickbait or, you know, do something that you're not actually talking about. So yeah, definitely. Um, and for those who are watching, we have a special code for everyone. Um, so you can create your free account on Metricool, but if you want to try any of our premium plans, um, so Latasha mentioned like the reporting, um, you know, downloading and customizing those reports is one of our premium features. Um, so you can try 
any of our premium plans, 30 days for free with code Latasha. So make sure to get in there, create your account and um, just try some of our premium plans so you can test it all out. Um, okay, we're gonna answer some questions in case anyone has any questions. Um, I'm sure a lot of people do. So feel free to drop them in the chat. And also if you're watching this at a later time, still free, feel free to add in um, any questions and we'll you know, try to get a response to those. Um, and this will live on our YouTube channel and also on Latasha's channel. So stream to both platforms. Um, so yeah, feel free to drop any questions or any comments, anything. <laughs> We're here to chat this morning. Um, I think someone had a question. So this one's kind of a long one. Um, in case we have different people responsible for different platforms. So I do some socials. We have someone for articles, YouTube. So it's tricky to coordinate the repurposing. Um, I know you do a lot of yours, you know, by yourself, but don't know if you have any kind of tips for this. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, when I think back to like my corporate days, this was a very, common issue is everyone kind of had their own things that they were um, that they were responsible for. And back then we didn't have Instagram reels or TikTok, but we did have like somebody who did white papers and articles and things like that. And as a part of the social team, I actually in my team, I can't take full responsibility for, but my social team and I, we just had monthly meetings. We scheduled a monthly meeting with that. Um, I think it was like the content team who's developing that um, just an hour meeting. So we could get aligned on what was coming out and just be, get ahead of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that way we weren't doing double work. You know, if they were writing a, an article about something, they could just send it to us in advance so we could cut out pieces of that to post on Twitter and things like that. So maybe that's something you could try, Pavlina, is just scheduling a meeting with any of those teams that you might want to grab social content from. Schedule a meeting once a month with the YouTube team, the article team, et cetera. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. Um, next one, how much content, um, I guess, do you get from each podcast episode? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. It depends on how good, <laughs> how good the episode is or how, how, uh, sassy sometimes the episode is. Cause like sometimes, you know, your podcasts are going to be just more factual, I suppose, mm -hmm. and a little bit more academic. And some of that content just doesn't tend to perform as well in the shorter form platforms. But if it is something where I am adding in maybe some pop culture references or some great brand examples or some good stats, I can sometimes get five or six pieces of content. If it is just a more straightforward episode, maybe I'm just getting one or two. So, um, you know, it, it depends really on, on the topic, I think. But I try to get obviously as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can anyone recommend where I can learn a repurposing process in a step-by-step -step approach? Um, I'm not going to teach myself with free stuff and could use the fastest <laughs> approach possible. Yeah, I, I respect that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if you no. have any resources, Aniston. Um, well, one I would say is to try auto lists. I think that's a way to easily... Um, start the repurposing and recycling process, something that you can automate so you don't have to, you know, worry about, okay, I want to start recycling content, but I need to remember every week or every, you know, so that's a good way to start. Um, yeah. and you can always just add to it. So if you want to, you know, if you have a new blog post and you want to add that to the list, um, honestly, creating a long list is going to just include more recycled content. So you're not, you know, cycling through that quickly. So yeah, um, I would say try that and you can do that for free. So yeah, for sure. And I'll put that on my topics list. I'll try to make a, a video that goes a little That's screen share, idea. you know, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, We'll try to help you out. <laughs> Ooh, okay. This is an interesting one. How do you pivot when your content or system is no longer working? Hmm. My advice, and I'm curious your thoughts on this too, Aniston, mm -hmm. my advice is to one, give it time. You know, the thing is content, whether it's short form or long form, it takes a little bit of time to like start developing stuff to look at and it's to, for, to be able to start looking at your analytics and have them give you anything meaningful. Because if you've only posted three videos, 
you know, that's not super representative of like an entire month's worth of content. So I would say one, give it time before you decide it's not working. But also I think the other thing is knowing what to measure is really important. Like, because sometimes I I'll admittedly get frustrated because I'm like, oh man, you know, my real or my, even my YouTube video didn't get as many views as I had hoped. But when I look under the hood, if you will, and I look at how many people clicked on the link or signed up for the thing I encourage them to sign up for, or, you know, how much traffic I get to my website, it actually did perform well. So if I were to just focus on those sort of vanity metrics, those view metrics or those like metrics, I might be a little bit disappointed, but really making sure that my end goal is being achieved um, is important there. With that said, if it really isn't working, um, then you just test something new and give it, do that same test, you know, give it a month at least, I think, to test, you know, to just kind of test your updated strategy, I would say. Definitely. I, I was going to say a similar thing. You know, I think first defining kind of what not working is. So, you know, what is your overall goal? What is, you know, what are you trying to achieve? And then using those analytics to say, okay, you know, how is, is it engaging? You know, what, what are the kind of the patterns we are seeing? And, you know, maybe if it's really falling off in terms of, you know, you're like, okay, this isn't, you know, similar to our other content, then you can say, how can we improve this? Um, yeah. So I think defining first kind of what your overall goal is and what it means to not really work yeah. for your audience. Okay, this one is more for you because I know you're you're more um, you know video <laughs> video savvy. But um, for long form, do you? I don't know if you film in 4K or 1080p. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. great question. Um, I honestly film in 1080p. Um, it doesn't look too grainy when it's scaled up, as long as I do like I said, give myself enough room. So back up the camera, zoom out the camera a little bit. If I have something really close up and I'm like stretching it a lot, it, it does look a little weird. I personally film in 1080p. My cameras that I have do shoot in 4k, but it just takes too long for me. I think for me, 4k just still isn't there yet in terms of like upload speed and all that just takes too long for me. So, you know, if there's something that's a big initiative. If you're working with a brand and you're like, you know, we're going on site and we're getting, you know, a huge production together. Yeah. Then try to make it as best good of quality as you can. But just for little old me, I'm like, it's fine. Oh, <laughs> you, you don't need to see me that HD anyway. <laughs> okay. We're going to take just a few more questions. Um, so how far in advance do you plan your content and schedule it? And how do you go about actually starting the planning process? It's a great question. So I like to do a monthly kind of editorial plan. So I'll look month by month at what events are coming up in the world or as they relate to my business. Um, look at, at my promotional calendar and same for my clients. Look at what sales they have going on, promotions they have going on, that kind of type of thing and just kind of plot it out. Again, I like to use Metricool's drafts for that. Like I'll say, oh, Mother's Day is coming up. Let me just like do a placeholder um, and create a quick draft so that I know I need to create content, gather content um, for the actual posts and, and copywriting there. Um, and then I usually go kind of week by week when it comes to actually uploading the content and really perfecting, you know, the copywriting and, and hashtags and things like that. Just, I feel like that cadence gives me enough time to move things around. Cause as we know, like we can plan, you know, we could plan out our year, but we can never predict things that maybe go on in the world or in our industry that we need to be timely about. What do you, what about you? I know you are responsible for a lot of that at Metricool, right? So how do you Yeah, similar it? thing. Um, I think we, you know, we kind of schedule out and look at a month's view. Um, and then, I mean, I know for kind of the social side, I'm more on the blog side, but for the social side, I think there's some, you know, some gaps in case, okay, you know, here's a day where if we, you know, we don't really have anything set and then, you know, maybe the social team will reach out to me and say, what blog post do we want to promote? So I think having a kind of general plan and then having some, you know, wiggle room in between, just because as we know, things on social media change every day, every week. Um, so I think being flexible too with that schedule is important. 
and, um, you know, maybe giving yourself some time to create and have that, you know, have that room of, okay, if things change, then we can adapt. Um, yep. and it's not chaos. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, this is going to be the last one. This one's interesting because something that I think a lot of people struggle with is how, you know, how do you kind of get into video content when you might not be comfortable on the camera or have the right equipment? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great question. And I think also I hear this a lot from the social media managers out there who maybe have a CEO who's like camera shy or, you know, they're like, am I supposed to just get on camera? So I, I think this is a really common thing. One, I think um, there's a lot of content types that you can create that actually don't require anyone to be on camera. Now, if I have my wish list, I do think people connect with people. So of course, I think it's, it's great if you have somebody who's willing to be on camera, but you can do like simple kind of, I call them like B-roll videos where maybe, maybe you manage social media for a hotel. Take video of all the beautiful, you know, hotel amenities and just put little like quotes or tips or whatever over top of those videos. Um, same thing, like I repurpose my tweets. I didn't even talk about this in this presentation, but I screenshot my tweets or other people's tweets and just put it over uh, like stock video footage and, you know, paste it over top of it and create, you can create something really easily like that in Canva or any quick video editor. And that's a good kind of foray into video, just see how it performs. And maybe that'll get you a little bit more comfortable with the editing platforms and kind of the format. Mm -hmm. So maybe eventually you will want to get on camera or encourage your client or whoever to get on camera. Yeah, definitely. It's always a scary thing to <laughs> yeah. start. And for sure, I think once you start, you know, letting go of, okay, I'm here, you know, for example, for today, I'm here to talk with you and educate the audience and kind of getting past of, okay, I know <laughs> I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look my best. It's nine in the morning. I have no makeup on <laughs> those little things that we worry about. Sometimes you kind of just have to let go, but yeah, pe people aren't there for that. You know, that's something I even still I have to remind myself, obviously do what do what's going to make you feel confident. You know, if putting on a little bit of makeup does make you feel more confident, then do it. But if you don't care, then who cares? Like, that's not why people are here. They're here to learn about what you have to say. Um, so as long as, you know, you, you're not like, I don't know, in, in a dark basement or something like just completely empty room, you know, your background looks totally great just just talk like you would be talking to a client or a friend and that is the most important thing is your message definitely okay great great spot to to end on <laughs> thank you so much latasha that was amazing um everyone have an amazing day and once again make sure to watch this back um or if you can't watch it in real time um it'll be on our channels and make sure to use code Latasha to try any of our premium features um, and go sign up for her webinar next week. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Of course.